Hi, I'm Jean-Baptiste, a data analyst on the MBAM team. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of designing a correct sample for your remote data collection system. Designing a correct sample is an essential step towards collecting informative data that can answer your questions. The first stage in this process is to define what information we need from our survey. At WFP, we need to answer the following questions. Who is food insecure? How many people are food insecure? Where do they live? Why are they food insecure? What are their needs? How is the situation likely to evolve? And what are the risks threatening them? So whenever we design a food security survey, we think about these questions and ensure that the survey fills in any information gaps that we might have. To do this, we need to identify the target population. We do this by talking to our partners to clarify exactly what information they need. Once our information needs are clear, we then define the correct sampling frame. This means all the individuals or households in the population will draw the sampling from. When designing the sample, we have to consider that for remote food security surveys, there are a number of questions we always have to answer. The first question is, can you reach your target population via mobile phones? This may sound obvious, but when you are designing a remote food security survey, you cannot reach people who do not have access to a phone unless you give phones to the people you want to survey. This can create bias in your results, as you may not be able to reach the poorest segment of your target population. This is something we'll look at in more detail later in the course. There could be geographic areas that you cannot reach because there is no network coverage. There may also be a certain demographic you cannot reach because even if households have a phone, some members may not be able to access it. For example, women often have less access to mobile phones. This would probably create a significant bias. Another question to think about is how often do you need to do the survey. When designing your sampling approach, you need to decide the frequency of the survey. For example, whether it should be weekly or monthly. You then decide whether you call the same people every round, panel design, or you call different people, cross-section. If you decide to go for a panel design, you have to expect people to drop out of a survey after one or more rounds. With cross-section design, you have access to enough phone numbers so that you can do new samples every round. Another question to answer is how detailed do your estimates need to be? We often want specific estimates for certain subpopulations rather than just national figures. The data could be broken down by geography, for example, with separate estimates for provinces. It could be by demography, with separate estimates for households led by men and those led by women. Often we need both geographic and demographic breakdowns. A great example is separate estimates for IDPs and non-IDPs within the provinces of a country affected by a conflict. Taking all into consideration, we have to decide how many respondents we need to interview for results to be meaningful and to get good enough data. The sample size varies depending on the type of respondents and your subpopulations. For households, you need a larger sample. When you survey key informants, the sample can be smaller. We'll take an in-depth look at this topic in the section on certification. Finally, what are your resources? It's all very well to design a large, comprehensive sample that fits your exact information criteria and data standards. But if you don't have the necessary resources, you won't be able to implement it. Limiting factors could be general ones, such as finances or staff availability, or they could be specific to remote surveys. For example, the capacity of a call center or in-house team. Always remember that the sample design doesn't have to remain stable over time. In fact, it's important to rethink and update it in the light of previous results to make sure that's as effective as possible. 
This is exactly what FVAM did in Iraq. Initially, we carry out countrywide surveys to have the greatest number of responses and get an overall picture of the food security situation in the country. However, after a year of data collection, the WFP country office decided that this information was not enough. They knew that there were parts of Iraq where the food security situation was particularly bad. And they need more granular information about these areas. Based on information about these food insecurity hotspots, the survey was changed to focus on these areas. We also realized that when contacting random households through the mobile network, we couldn't reach some of the occupied cities such as Ramadi, Mosul, or Fallujah. With the help of a local NGO, we managed to set up a network of key informants in the cities to get regular information on food supply and prices. Today, we carry out monthly hotspot and key informant surveys to get dynamic information from these volatile areas. We still do the national-wide survey every three months so that we maintain an up-to-date picture of the food security situation everywhere. And we can see if any new areas are producing particularly different results. Thanks for watching this introduction to Sampling Frame. We'll go into more details in the rest of the lesson.